Um, and it's, you know, it's, uh, I think a salient point that I retired after 30 years with the same national forest. Um, and, and it's an important point that, um, it, you know, in the last decade, we've been publishing, finding and publishing a lot of new stuff, and a lot of that has to do with being familiar enough with, with what grows in your neighborhood that when you see something that's an oddball, you, it stands out. Um, so this was a great way to wrap up my career. It was the most fun I've had in a long time. Um, it could have been a horrible year, and it turned out to be a, a pretty great field season, and you'll see why. So, um, and, uh, starling, I think, I think starling is a good word for this plant. So let me um, just get you oriented. So, this is Western Shasta County. The, the, um, the orange polygons are the geographic area that we'll be focused on. So look at a couple landmarks. There's Redding, um, the town of Redding, north of that is Shasta Lake. Um, Interstate 5 goes north and south through there. And then to the west of the longer orange polygon is the the divide between Shasta and Trinity counties. You might also notice that Trinity is misspelled there. Wow. <laughs> Pretty hard, I mean it's Shasta County. Um, <clears throat> and also notice where the highways are, the other um, you know, major thoroughfares. And you'll notice that the two orange polygons have no major or minor um, road associated with them other than uh, Interstate 5. I'm really glad that, that this session came after the, the fire session this morning because it really set the stage for this. There you see the northern part of the car fire. The, the map is cut off so that the uh, Whiskey Town National Park unit of the recreation area is off the map to the south. Um, to the north then is the Delta Fire and the Curtis Fire that um, Interstate 5 goes through the middle of those. So after these fires in 2018, um, there's been a feverish amount of activity. Um, even before the fire was out, uh, the, the private timber ground was being logged and um, there was work going on to um, cut down and deck the, the burned logs, uh, try to restore some of the roads and the, the culverts and other um, damage associated with the suppression effort. <clears throat> and the, the Forest Service, the, the Shasta Trinity National Forest, determined that we weren't going to do any large-scale salvage logging because that just doesn't work for us. Um, but what, what the agency does want to do is to remove the hazard trees for several hundred feet on either side of the road so that they don't fall over on somebody. Or, or fall over and close the road. And so in order to do that salvage work along the roads, it's necessary to do some kind of botanical surveys in, in hopes that we can avoid doing further harm to the species that survived the fire and the suppression effort. Now look at this photo, and I, um, from what Zeke um, Lunder said earlier, have a picture in your mind of the checkerboard ownership, because that's where we are. We're in checkerboard land. So look at this photo and tell me if you can see where the section line is. <laughs> and then the bonus question, tell me if you can guess which side of the line is private ground and which side is national forest. Hmm. Well, the surveys were done in the spring of 2019 um, by uh, Lucetta Sims from our Meaverville district and Martin Lenz from the Shasta Lake district and Brenna Montaigne from our Mount Shasta district with some um, seasonal help. I just, because I had another assignment to the regional office, um, just came back from that at the end of June after they had conveniently finished all the work. And so Martin offered to take me on a tour of what they found. So 
This is our day driving up Dog Creek, the Dog Creek Road, which goes into the heartland of the orange, the big orange polygon. And that, a lot of what they were looking for was this arnica venosa, which is in the insect photo. And that is not uh, rotated incorrectly. It actually does grow laterally out, out, of, this, out of the side of the, the road cut. So we're stopping periodically and looking at stuff and kind of, you know, um, sighing over the giant dozer lines and the, just the piles of debris everywhere. And <clears throat> getting out and admiring things. And we come around a bend, and this is what we see. And, you know, I'm getting the princess tour. I don't have to navigate. I don't have to drive. I still have my slippers on, actually. Um, I'm looking out the window, and I said, Martin, what is that? What is that? And he says, I don't know, you know, do you want me to pull over? I said, well, yeah. <laughs> so we, you know, we parked on this corner here and we walked back and stared at these plants and, and you know, I wish I had a video of it because I, I remember distinctly looking at it and saying, Martin, I have never seen that before. And he said, no, I have never seen that before either. Should we try to key it out? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> So we, we take a branch and we sit on the side of the road, dangle our, you know, in the shade, it was hot, dangle our, our feet over the side, go through the key. We think it's a phacelia, it looks, it looks phacelia-like. So the first couplet divides it between biennials or perennials or annuals. And it's clearly a perennial. It's a haunted big thing. It's like three feet tall, you know, and this big. It's okay. Not cryptic, okay? This is not a cryptic species. So the next, um, the next break is between uh, how many seeds it has per capsule and something about the calyx lobes. And that it was flowering, didn't have good uh, seed capsules, but you know, managed to figure out that there were more than four seeds, which is really all you need to know here. So more than four seeds. So the next break is whether the you know the leaf blade is something or other, the stamens are included, the style's not very cleft. Oh, and it's only in the Mojave Desert. <clears throat> so conveniently the leaf blade fits with the other thing and um, the stamens are way exerted and the style's cleft a lot of oh, you know, it's in the right place. So the last bit then that we get down to um, you, these are, my comments are in blue here and trying to ram this into one of the three tacks of it are in this last batch here. And every one of them has something wrong with it. Um, either its range is wrong or there's some character that's wrong. And uh, so we said, you know, screw it, put it in the press, <clears throat> stop. And uh, so we did, we went on and looked at other stuff, went back at the end of the day, took a bunch of photos. We did find some more of it that first day. So here's the cool thing. Shout out to Calflora. Um, I went back and what I did first was I, I put an observation record in Calflora. And the cool thing for the lazy person like me um, who doesn't carry a GPS unit is if my telephone geotags my photos if I make sure that that's turned on. And then when I upload a photo into the Calflora observation app, it tags it with the coordinates. And then all I have to do is upload a photo or two and, you know, give some basic data and, yeah, voila, there's a record. Which is incredibly useful when you're share, trying to share information with other people and you don't want to have to drive them out there. Um, so the next thing I did was, um, was get the word out with some help. Um, you know, tell the usual people that, that are out in that area, alert the tribe in general, which um, I got help. It, you know, magically, I, I, called, I called, actually, I got in touch with Genevieve um, Walden because I knew that she had been deeply involved in Vasilia um, as a grad student and a, and a post-grad. Um, you know, I didn't know if she had moved on into other things. Uh, so I sent her pictures and said, you know, do you know this thing? Is it disjunct? Is it just something I've not seen before? Um, and 
and she wrote right back, and, and I said, and are you, who's the Facilia person now? And she wrote back and said, well, um, you know, I'm just finishing up the Flora of North America treatment for Facilia, so I'm still good. Um, and, um, and that's a new thing. Yeah, that's a new thing. And so I thought, well, you know, yay. And, and magically, you know, Alexa referred to the synchronicity. Who calls me but Joey Santori that day of all days and says, you know, hey, what's happening? I'm going to kind of be driving through that area, what, you know. Um, you know, and I said, well, I think I found a new, a new species. And he said, you know, where? And um, so I sent him a link to the Calflora um, observation. And I'll be darned if he didn't drive up there the same day and post this on Facebook. Um, oh, and he made a YouTube video about it that was mildly pornographic. <laughs> like he does. <laughs> So that took care of getting the news out. He has way more followers than I do. So I had my expert, Genevieve, there on the left, and you know my, my homies, um, the guys who get me out of the office and who help me find stuff. There's uh, Len Lynn Strand in the middle and Martin Lenz on the right, and they're both in the audience, so yay. And see, they're surrounded by this facelia. Does that look like a tiny little thing? No. no. So now what? So we know we have a new thing. So we do what you usually do, which is we just drive around and look for some more. So um, about once a week, Martin, Martin and I would go drive around and look for some more. And within the first couple days, actually, of, of the discovery, um, Len had already turned up a couple more sites. And... Martin and I found, uh, I think, four or five more sites within a, um, within a week or so, and then there was kind of a long dry period, and we thought, wow, you know, maybe we found everything within two weeks. <laughs> Genevieve came up, she was pretty excited, she came up and drove around with us. Um, we had Martin on the CD radio, because uh, one of the, the, the memories that I will have is dodging log trucks. Because those are skinny roads. SPI was hauling like crazy out of there as fast as they could cut the trees down and get them out. And the only way you can um, avoid an encounter of the wrong kind is to be on the radio and say your, your location and pull over if somebody says, you know, I'm at milepost seven and you're at milepost six and a half, they're coming down. And it's like, Martin, let's pull over now. So Genevieve came up and we collected a bunch of uh, vouchers and material for molecular analysis. She offered to do the, the molecular analysis through her lab at the California Department of Food and Ag. Yay, I don't have a lab. I don't even know how to do it. Um, and uh, she said, I could also write the technical description for you if you'd like me to do that. And I thought, yeah. <laughs> So I stuck a, a post on Facebook um, maybe a week later, and not too long after that, Lawrence Janeway says, hey, I think I found your thing. Um, you know, it's farther south than, than you've been yet. So um, it's kind of like crowdsourcing discovery. Pretty cool. So after a season of driving around, uh, we know some stuff. So we know that based on the molecular analysis, um, it does belong in that clade with the last three species that, it, that the key led to. So, Pacelia balandrii, Pacelia hydrophiloides, and Pacelia prosera are actually its blood relatives. And it's uh, the section Baradiana um, that was named by Genevieve and um, her advisor, Bob Patton. Dr. Bob. So, this is what the the characters of that section are. I have pit, pitted seeds, the pits are not in rows. Um, you can maybe see in the, the next picture the long, uh, very divided styles. Um, raggedy leaves, this one is so glandular that it leaves a resin print on the newsprint. And it also leaves a, a shiny brown resiny residue on your fingers if you handle it that doesn't come off. Really attractive. Um, and then it has these, uh, these kind of chalice-shaped flowers 
with very exerted stamens. So, Bolandra is to the west and south. Hydrophilloides is a Sierra Nevada plant that gets up into the, barely into the southern Cascades, so it's to the east and south. Prosera is a, forms a horseshoe around the location of the, the new species. And the locations that we know of now for the new one are in the, the Facelia prosera donut hole, this little, this little you know, polygon there. So it's all around, but not St. Patrick that I can find. All of the occurrences that we found so far are on the Bragdon Formation, which is mostly shale, and so it produces a crumbly, uh, well-drained, moving substrate. The Bragdon Formation uh, goes to the west as far as about Douglas City, which is near Weaverville, and then up to the, the northeast around McLeod Reservoir. And road access is not good, so it's going to be Hard to get around much in there more. Um, using Cal Flora again, I noticed they've added some more layers to their map, and one of them is a precipitation layer, and so I just put the dots, you know, the dots were there, and I turned on the layer, and uh, it turns out that all of the known locations have 80 inches of annual precipitation or more, some of them more than 90 inches. Despite the fact that it occurs in an area that regularly burns, it doesn't appear to be a fire follower, and I say that because its habitat is, is an avoidance. I mean, it, it, it grows in a place that has low fuels, um, generally not a canopy, and so it, although it's affected by fire sometimes, like if a, a burning branch rolls downhill on it, or um, you know, fire suppression activity can certainly affect it. But generally, it's not consumed by a fire. We did find one plant that um, the top had burned off and it had resprouted. Um, and it appears that it is resilient. This, this, um, this deeply buried caudex uh, resprouts readily after mechanical disturbance or um, being killed by fire. You can see that this, this small population is actually growing in the roadbed. I can imagine that during the time that the, the fire was active, when the Delta fire was burning, um, this population would have been driven over and parked on, bladed, um, and the next year it just sprouted again. And probably most importantly, in terms of being a classic fire follower, we didn't, we're not sure we saw any seedlings of this thing. You know, you'd expect um, with a fire follower that there'd be a flush of seedlings the following year. And the example I would give you which is a fire follower, is this bush poppy, Denver Mekon, which has uh, germinated by the hundreds of thousands in places that formerly were completely forested and there was no Denver Mekon to be seen under the canopy. But now that the canopy's gone, the, the bush poppy is there in profusion. This was taken at a place called Delta Point on the east side of Interstate 5. That's I-5 through the middle, north on your right, south on your left. The Sacramento River Canyon, um, and then looking west into Facelia land. So that's what the Delta Fire looks like right now. Um, we noticed that we saw a lot of apparently suitable habitat and very little occupied habitat. It almost always grows with this Dracaria cystila, which is another thing in the Hydrophilaceae it's a major fake out because the habit is kind of grossly similar. And when it goes to fruit, the inflorescence is a, is a dead ringer. And so, you know, we just got faked out a lot. But why doesn't it occupy more of its habitat? This, this spot was a mile, a mile at most, from the type locality, the, the picture I showed earlier, had all the right stuff, but there's no facility there. So I don't know. So why did it take so long to find this? I think the main reason is that to find something, not only the object has to be there, but an observer has to be present. And this thing is not on the way to anywhere. <laughs> no campgrounds, no trails, no meadows, no lakes. 
The only people that go there regularly are people that work for a timber company or hunters. Hunters probably aren't looking for facilia. <laughs> and if we found it in, in 2019 because we were out there doing the, you know, the hazard tree surveys, that's all. And we wouldn't have been out there doing hazard tree surveys if there hadn't been fire there. It looks like other things. You know, there's the facility on the left. The next one next to it is Draperia. And it grows also intertwined with, um, um, with Rubus. And it looks like Ribes. If it's not in flower, it just kind of looks like a Ribes. So I, I end with this one. This is, uh, this is the pop quiz. It is, can you tell how many Facilia spinov individuals there are in this photo? I don't know either. <laughs> a bunch. But they're all mixed in with other stuff, with lots of drapery there. Okay, I'd like to thank a few people. First, um, Sierra Pacific Industries and Meg Henwood, especially for the, the maps that I use. Uh, Martin Lenz kept us from dying, which is awesome. Did almost all of the driving. And um, Cal Flora. Cal, Cal Flora really served me well um, in this process, both for communicating out and for um, some of the really simple analysis. So I'm, I'm a big fan. Thank you very much.